How did you get into astrology? I mean, right back from the very beginning. Yeah. I uh, I have to give thanks. By the way, Rob Werner, if you ever get to see this, thank you very much. Bless your heart. I had a physics professor um, in university come to, astro to, to uh, astrology class, come to physics class um, with an astrology book on top of his physics book. And I rather gave him a hard time about it for the whole class. And he crossed his arms over his chest and said, Reader, I'll treat you on this subject same way I do physics, and that is, I won't talk to you about it while you're ignorant. So he kind of poked me right in my intellectual arrogance. And anyways, that started it. Oh, excellent. How has astrology impacted your life, both personally and as a career? Wow, that's a big question. I make a living doing it, so I don't have to get a job. That's cool. Definitely not a nine-to-fiver. Excellent. Um, but what I noticed in the beginning, now it's hard to say when I figured this out, because it, it, the bottom line is astrology changed how I think altogether. It, it, it added a more intuitive process, a, a way. I, I get astrology is a language that taught me how to think intelligently but intuitively. Intuitively but intelligently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's totally altered how I think. How I perceive things, lets me make a living. I'm a, I, I, I'm of service to people doing it. I don't know. I love astrology. It's changed what, my life. What fascinates you about it, and, and how would you define it? Well, first off, let's see. Um, what fascinates me is that it works. That it works. In the beginning, I couldn't believe that it worked. That it would work. That it could work. And then I saw it working. I was doing charts and seeing the correlations between the charts and people's lives and it really disturbed me it bothered me I had to try to understand how is this working why is it working and while you know 25 plus years later I can't tell you how it works or why it works but boy I've given it a lot of thought but I think it's done me a lot of good to think about it and how would you define it like if somebody said what is astrology it's what a language you? it's a coherent system of symbols each of which is endowed with meaning, but when they combine together, they create complete thoughts. But it's a language, you know, most of the languages that we have in common are rational languages. They work in a linear fashion. They, they serve the part of our mind. <laughs> hold that thought, hold that thought. Okay, go for it. Most of the languages that we have in common as a community, like say, mathematics, arithmetic, and English, serve the linear mind, the rational mind, the mind that works by dissecting reality into the bits and focusing on the bits and studying the bits. And our culture has become a dissecting culture, but astrology and any other system of divination is going to operate, it's going to serve the part of our intelligence that notices, not, that doesn't separate parts from each other, but sees them together, connects them together, weaves them together. The intuitive intelligence has been long neglected, I think in modern history, in, in, in our community, in our universities, the intuitive intelligence, but astrology and divination systems in general provide us a systematic way that we can access that part of our intelligence that perceives the connections and the relationships between things and resolves them into a whole. And that's what I think is lacking. I mean, here we are, we're living in a society where the rational mind is dominant, we create amazing machines, and then fail to notice or care about the impact they have in the world around us. I think we're living in an era where the rational mind is out of balance too much, and we need to bring the intuitive mind back, and astrology is one of the ways in which we can do that. Yeah. Um, what's your, uh, what, what, do you have any special techniques you use in astrology, and, and, and or what's your favorite techniques or transit, and, and why? Um, I have a kind of passing interest in almost any astrological technique. I've uh, at least ex um, exposed myself to almost every... If anybody has done it, I've tried it, probably. But I've also gotten bored with really complex things. Mostly I stick with the basics. I think the fundamentals, the planet signs, houses, midpoints from a natal astrology chart is so rich that there's not necessarily a big need uh, for me to go past that. Um, transits, progressions, solar returns, various timing techniques, um, probably serve us the most in the long run. Um, 
chart comparisons in intimacy. And when we, when we look at the way people interact with one another, push each other's buttons, support one another, or tear each other down, the, some of the powerful of astrology and sinistry I think is amazing. So those are, I guess, my, my favorite techniques. Well, could, would, do you have a like, quickie description of how planet signs, houses, aspects, and transits sort of interact, like the glue between them? Like, all right, all right, that's a good question. Because after all, it's, it's a language. And it's important to realize it's a language where all of the meaning comes from human experience. Um, the, the language of astrology is basically a language of resonance or vibration. And everything in the universe, everything in existence is in some kind of vibrational state or another. And that's what we're trying to do when we use astrology, so we're trying to understand the vibrational signature. Now, if you look at planets, planets are energy. Pl planets are the, are the actual living force. And you can say that the planets represent at least in a human being, represents specific layers within our psyche, specific layers within our psyche where definite creative activities are at work. So the planets represent our energies. Now our energies, well, they're constantly moving with or without our awareness, sifting through the space-time continuum, sifting through the world around us, selecting people, places, and things to get in touch with, to focus attention on, to interact with. The houses represent this process of selecting people, places, things to pay attention to, to interact with. The signs of the zodiac. Signs of the zodiac are, are in some ways, they're the glue or the paste that holds it all together in our minds. But they're like, well, let's see. If planets are creative motions, creative motives, living dynamic energy, then planets are verbs. If houses are the people, places, and things we interact with, then houses are nouns. And signs of the zodiac are related to planets. When a sign of the zodiac is related, re, related to a planet, it's like an adverb, describing, modifying, coloring, flavoring, the way that planetary energy within our psyche expresses itself and it tries to satisfy itself. When a sign is associated with a house, it becomes more of an adjective because it's describing uh, qualities or modifications in a particular thing or whatever we're looking at. So, um, and in the aspects, would they be like the dialogue or something? You know, that's the interesting thing. The first aspect we use as astrologers is the zero degree aspect, and we call that a conjunction. Now, if you're going to look at in the English language, we have a class of words we call conjunctions. They're the ifs, ands, buts, neithers, nors. So what aspects do, you could say that a planet in a sign in a house creates a complete astrological statement. And what an aspect does is it ties two different statements together with a kind of quality, with a, 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 a quality of unity, a quality of complication or conflict, a quality of flow, balance, ease, depending upon which of the aspects we're looking at. So that's the way I would look at that. And how would you talk about the transits then to the whole thing? You know, the astrology chart, there's so many different ways we could describe it. It's like a schematic diagram of an electronic device or a, a, a blueprint of a house or perhaps best yet a musical score. That is to say our astrology chart is a diagram of how our mind-body's energy resonates. And in the same way, as transits move through the sky, they sound different notes. When a planet lines up in the sky today with where it was when we were born, then the present resonant quality of the world around us vibrates our own resonant quality. So there is a stimulation, an energy being added that is happening during a transiting in, in, influence. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Totally. I love it. Um, how do you prepare for a session, and, and do you ever get nervous before sessions? Um, or did you ever? Uh, well, 25 years down the line, I've rather worked through most of my nerves. However... What would you say to the beginning astrologer that's just starting out reading charts, and they, they're feeling this nervousness before the yes. client does it? Well, let me tell you that when I look at a chart today, I always get that same feeling that I got when I first started looking at charts, and that is that, you know what? I don't understand this. Nobody can understand this. Yeah, I always get that. That's always for sure. Because the, 
the human nature, our lives here are filled with mystery. There is so much mystery. In a way, when we're doing astrology, we're attempting to plumb the depths of that mystery. But believe me, it's far deeper than we're going to ever get. So, no, I'd rather come to peace with it. A new astrologer beginning out, stick with the symbols. Stick with what they mean. Don't make stuff up. You can. The symbols are powerful, and you can trust them. If you have a well-timed chart for some... Yeah, okay, who starts with a well-timed chart? You have to get there after some study. But when you have a chart that works for someone, it works. You can depend upon it. Trust your chart and just do your work. Do you have any particular ways you prepare for a session? Um, well, let's see. I sit down twice a day and quiet my mind. I think that's probably the most important thing that I do to prepare for a chart reading. I sit down twice a day and focus on my breath and offer my life up. Now, each particular chart, right? You just take a look at the chart. Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. You look at the chart. You think each sign, each planet, this person has such and such rising. And try to wear it. Put it on your own body. Feel it. I have this ascendant. I have this moon. I have this sun. I have this aspect. I try to personalize it. I think to myself, what would it be like to wear this clothes? Because after all, that's what our chart is. It's just a uniform we've adopted for this time. Tell us about the uh, astrological community. I mean, I'm sure you made some friends with these unique characters across the globe, and you know, people like Philip Sedgwick. People like, you know, what what would you what would you say about the growing astrological community, including the next generation coming along? I. Uh, met this next generation of astrologers fundamentally through MySpace. And um, I'm impressed. Um, some of these young people have more astrological knowledge today after just a few years of working study than I have after 25 years of work. I'm so impressed with them. And I really, really look forward to those young people just cranking out the thousands and thousands of charts and chart readings and observations of all of the lives. Oh, good Lord, they're going to be a mature group of astrologers in another 20 years. It's going to be so impressive. I, I'm, I think that the, where, in, where our human community is concerned, we're at a time in history where we need to bring the intelligence of the intuitive mind, the intelligence of our feelings, up above the threshold of awareness into our active way we live consciously. And astrology can help us to do it. And these young astrologers, they're going to participate in that. I think. Uh, what is your focus in astrology? You know, you got evolutionary astrologers and Vedic astrologers and Hellenistic astrologers and all these different types. What, what type of astrologer are you or what influences have you know, streamed or strained down into your focus there. Yeah. One of my websites is spiritualastrology.com. Um, that's where my blog writings go. Um, my business card says spiritual astrology, so I suppose that would be the label um, that I'm offering. Um, People say, what do you mean, spiritual astrology? And I say, well, you know, first off, let me be clear. I think all of astrology is spiritual, just like I think all of life is spiritual. Um, sometimes I put that label, spiritual, in front of astrology just to remind people to think about spirit, to think about spiritual things. Um, fundamentally, I'm a psychological astrologer. What I do is um, help people understand themselves. And understanding ourselves is always a blessing in terms of living a happy, joyous, fulfilling, productive, a good life, living a good life. Um, so, you know, after I guess I'm a spiritual astrology, psychological astrologer. Could you talk about um, the benefits of astrology for someone who maybe just, just having, you know, seen for 20 years sun sign horoscopes and thinking blah, 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 and then after having seen this, uh, say documentary and now they want to go get their chart done what would you say are some of the benefits there's one benefit I want to identify very clearly and um, you know when we look at astrology charts there's a lot of superstition in the world 
Um, and, and, and some of the people who believe in astrology are as superstitious as those who believe against astrology, and some who believe against astrology are just as superstitious as those who believe in astrology, because both of their opinions have developed without much real experience or learning or study. Um, but if we want to understand how an astrology chart works, we have to understand that a person fills their astrology chart with their life. And, you know, you can think of it as a potential or a pattern or a blueprint, a potential. And we develop, we express that potential in our character progressively as we move from different levels of awareness. For example, we all start out ignorant. Self-ignorant, that's the way we begin. And if we live a little, get a little experience, we become self-conscious. Now, this isn't a very comfortable stage in our development. But at this stage of, a de of our development, we're paying more attention than we were before. And through that attention, we become self-aware. And self-awareness, self-awareness yields self-understanding, self-understanding, self-acceptance. And our character changes. The same potential in the natal chart changes as we move self Acceptance becomes self-love, self-love, self-motivation, self-motivation, self-actualization, self-actualization, self-realization, and finally liberation. We can throw the whole astrology thing away because it no longer applies to us. That would be the beautiful goal. Now, the reality is an astrology chart, a complete blueprint of our psychic nature, our, our, our karma for this lifetime, can help us move through self understands through self awareness to self understanding to self acceptance and that's the place where our lives and our our process of development becomes conscious until then much of our energy is until we've accepted ourselves we can't do much work on ourselves we can't do much self improvement any part of yourself that you want to improve first you accept it and i think astrology can do a great service in helping people come into a state of acceptance self acceptance Nice, nice benefit. Um, uh, any, uh, any, any books you've written, or, or let's say, a web website. Uh, you know, and what inspires you to, to crank out the creative writing or the material? I do some uh, blog writing. Uh, PaulReader.com is my main website. SpiritualAstrology.com is where you'll find my blogs. I have a MySpace uh, page for Paul Reader, and some writings that are there. I have. I'm not published in terms of in book form at this point. I have a piece um, in work, and you might be shocked to find out the title of it is "Life Is Inside Out." But um, and you know it's it'll be a while before that's finished. Um, spiritual path. Uh, you know, astrology seems to indicate that there's a infinite intelligence or a divine intelligence. Most would call God the eternal source, the Creator, Allah, whatever you call. Um, do you have a spiritual path? And if so, what's your approach to it? Okay, so the straight answer, do I, do I have a spiritual path, is yes. But then, so do all of God's creatures have a spiritual path. Um, a lot of times people say, well, are you with this religion or that religion? And... Um, you know, to that extent, I'm with all religion. I think religion is a good process. I don't really think good religion is competitive. So, um, I've been a pract I've, I've been a practitioner of yoga technology. The truth is, I became a dog and a hound when I was a teenager, right? I just wanted to study scripture. I wanted every scripture, and I didn't care what scripture it was, really. I mean, I grew up in the Midwest, so of course it was a Bible to begin with. But the whole thing, the Quran. I'm very much interested in all aspects of, you know, religion. But basically, I think that the real religion is something that happens deep inside you, deep inside the individual. I think if you want religion, you got to learn how to sit and quiet yourself. Yeah, I, I call it desert island religion myself. What would you find on the desert island inside? <laughs> yeah. um, is there anything that I don't know to ask you that you would like to share? Just having met you, you know. I mean, uh, what are you going to ask? I, I, astrology is a good tool for a, is a good tool for a spiritual student, for someone whose sincere desire is 
to understand and express oneself fully as a whole, as a complete being. I mean, that's really what spirit and religion is all about. And um, astrology is a great tool for that. And there you go.